How's it going, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about the BPM editor in Virtual DJ 8. Uh, it's got a pretty powerful uh, BPM editor that can uh, uh, flow with tempo, tempo changes, and uh, it really lets you uh, nail down your tempos perfectly. But before I show you that, I want to tell you something. The BPM editor, like the POI editor and most of the editors, it's something that you're going to want to do when you're auditioning your tracks, when you're setting your playlist. It's not something that you're going to want to do live in your, at your gigs. Okay, the uh, If you want to use um, beat correction while you're live, like if you notice that something's off while you're playing a track live, the thing you're going to want to use here is the tap tempo button. Okay, And um, this button, if you click it because um, the two things you're going to fix with the BPM editor is the two things that you can fix with the tap button. Um, the first is where this is your CBG. Uh, and what this does is a count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, uh, if it, you find it off, if on the one beat it's over here, or over here, or just, you know, somewhere just willy nilly random, you click it once and it'll automatically make it reset down to the first. Um, the other thing they can do is if you just keep clicking it, click, click click it'll count your clicks it'll uh, kind of reanalyze based on your clicks on the song and uh, it'll give you a, a new BPM so uh, we're gonna work on uh, this song today with the BPM editor uh, to, the way to get there is you can either uh, go to your tempo here right mouse click on it brings up your editor uh, another way is if you go down and select your track uh, you can bring up the menu that shows all the editors and BPM will be one of them uh, also, uh, you can if you're here at the POI editor, you can click BPM up here and it automatically will take you to the BPM editor. Uh, and the, the things that you can set in the BPM editor are um, uh, your anchors, your beat anchors, and that's something that you can also edit here in your POI editor. Uh, if you want more information about that, you can check out my other videos on the POI editor itself. Now. Uh, this song right here, as you can see in the song, there's uh, I chose this one because it's, this here, this uh, is all real mellow, and then here, there's a huge tempo shift where uh, it, the track gets really, really fast and really busy. So let's take a look at it, and here it is again. Here's a complete waveform. Um, here, it'll, it tells you what it thinks the. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the PO <laughs> editor. Uh, here, uh, here's your, your waveform. Um, you can zoom in, in the waveform in and out by using your scroll wheel. You can see the entire track, or you can zoom out and look at individual beats. Now, the other thing is up here when you can see that this blue bar changes, and this is uh, lets you sc uh, scroll through the, the song itself. You're going to have two lines in here. Let's go ahead and move this a little bit. Uh, the first one is this green line. This green line is basically like your cursor. Um, and it's going to tell you, you can see uh, even up in here, as I move this green line along, that the, the audio moves up here. And really what this is, it's just the, the, the same line here that um, f as you play a track that slowly moves across. Okay, uh, that's all that that, that line is. So, uh, but you can uh, move that manually in here and then the other one is these red lines these are the important ones these are your beat anchors okay now what the beat anchor is is um, it's uh, correlates to, to, to this up here when it hits this red line this red line is this first beat right here right at the top number one okay now if we zoom in on here you'll see there's all these red blocks and your first one is pretty gray. Second one gets darker, darker, darker till it's a really dark gray. Now this is a four count. Okay, one, two, three, and four. And these correlate to the CBG up here. One, two, three, four. And our beat anchor um, is set at the beginning of the downbeat, beat number one. Okay, and if we move it, you'll see that those whole boxes move with it. We can drag this wherever we want it. Okay, and actually we are going to move this because uh, you can see that it's it's in the wrong spot. Uh, it's starting off here because this is beat number one. If we go back here and we, here's our cursor. If we listen to the song. Okay, th this is beat one over here. So we're going to uh, move our anchor so it actually starts on beat one. So now when we play it, it's going to be lined up. It's going to start off with uh, beat number one. So uh, down here, here's our buttons. Let's go over them really quick. Uh, the, f the first button is the plays pause button. 
Uh, the second one. Oh, and if, if you double click on here, it'll uh, you can make it play from that point. So if you want it to play from over here, you just double click it and uh, it'll start playing. Uh, the second button here, you can move this cursor wherever you want it, um, acts as a cue point where you can, as long as you hold it down, it, it will uh, play. And that's good for auditioning, whether or not that's where you want your cue point, you can make it, uh, put it wherever you want. See, and it's like, okay, well, that's where I want my point, and then that's where you can put it. Okay, next over here, this uh, will take the, whatever track Virtual DJ has scanned it, whatever tempo it is, uh, th this will either divide it by two or multiply it by two. Because sometimes Virtual DJ will make a really good guess and it will say, yes, this is this is the tempo that I think it is, but, you know, it just doubles it, you know. It uh, thinks that it's faster than it really is. In this case, the song is a perfect example of that because the, you know, listening to this, there's no way that's 154 beats per minute. That's way too fast. But if you hit this and divide it, you know, 77, that sounds a lot closer. So, but in the same way, if it thinks that the song is a lot slower than it is, you know, um, you can uh, do the same thing. Hit the, the X2 button and it uh, basically does the reverse and uh, doubles that tempo for you. In this case, we're going to switch it down. Now, here, these two buttons here, these let you fine tune it. Okay, uh, so we can go up. You can see the tempo moves up a little bit or you can move it down a little bit. In this case, we're going to move it down. And you can even see, as I move this tempo around, the, these blocks change uh, width. They, they start to get uh, wider as the tempo goes down. And if you were to move the tempo up, those blocks would get uh, smaller. So you can also manually grab them and change it. You can see, and as I manually drag these boxes and change their width, that uh, this tempo changes with it and 77 is probably about it. Then the other thing you can do here is you can just manually change this. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna say 77. And you can put that in. In this case, it's telling me 76.99, but uh, that's that's good. 76.99, and sometimes it will uh, it will say like a track is um, 139.9999, you know, uh, beats per minute. You, you know, you can just go ahead and, and tell it, you know, this is what I want it to be. So in this case, yeah, I just clicked it up once and uh, went from that 76.99 to 77. Okay, uh, over here, we have a little mini menu. Uh, this is reanalyze, and that's good. Like, let's say you've been messing with it and you're just not getting it right and you just want to just start over. You click reanalyze, it'll just scan the, the, the track over again. The other one is copy from the other deck. Copy from the other deck is where, like, let's say you set the uh, the BPM, you, f you figure out the BPM on one deck. You know, say uh, say 140 beats per minute. You can uh, just tell it to copy that onto the other side and you say, well, I'm already in the BPM and why do I want to do that? Well, let's say you're working on an acapella. Now, and here you can tell where our uh, our beats are. They're, they're pretty obvious right here, but, um, when you're working with say an acapella an acapella is very there's there's no beats there for you to to try and try and find so it can be very difficult to uh to set your bpm so what you can do is like let's say you have the radio edit to a song okay you set the bpm and you figure it out on one deck and then you take your acapella stick it in the other side and then you just say copy from the other deck so um so that's a that's a great tool that can that can be very handy uh, when you're using it correctly. Uh, these two buttons right here, these will take these blocks and shift them left and right. Okay, so let's go ahead and push it. There we go. See, it just and you can see the whole thing just shifts left and right, and you can see our anchor moves with it. And there's our anchor. Uh, one thing to know about this anchor, if I can, uh, and the POI editor. If you come over here to show all, um, there's this right here where it says first beat. That is a beat anchor. Okay. So, and you can go to my videos on POI and it'll tell you a little bit more about that. But I just wanted to make note of that, that the anchor uh, is there. And it's always going to be listed as first beat. Virtual DJ will always, always set that first anchor for you. Okay. And that's just its way of, of telling itself where this first beat is.
Um, then lastly over here is a variable BPM and we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but first I want to talk about this right here. This is the metronome. Now we're, we're in this case, you know, like we said, we can see where the beats are pretty, pretty readily. But in a lot of uh, songs, if the song is really busy, you need a metronome to, to listen to, to, uh, to the to the beats it makes it easier to line up and how you can do that is you just click on it now when you play it you're gonna hear a click along with uh, your track being played so let's go ahead and play it over here hear it hey, Jack. and uh, it just sounds like someone snapping their fingers and that's so that way it helps you um, hear where the beats are and how does it decide what's going to be does it go by this the 77 count well what it's going by is, is by these blocks every time it hits one of these blocks which is a beat uh it's going to click so uh, that's what this is for and something i want to point out uh real quick because uh, i had to, f to change this on mine because the, the the metronome was very very quiet when uh, i first loaded up virtual dj8 so um the way to make it louder let's go ahead and close this out uh, go over to the far right, and you can't see it in the screen, but uh, the settings menu it looks like the gear. Let me turn that off real quick. Um, you have all these different uh, things over here in options. Okay, and one of them is audio right here. Now, audio shows you a bunch of different things that you can that you can set, settings that you can play with. If you come over here to show advanced options, it'll give you a whole ton of stuff. Uh, the reason that it's hidden like that is because most of these are things that you're never going to play with because uh, they're just they're just stuff you don't mess with. You know, they're typically in pretty good settings right now, and if you play with it, you know, it could it might do some stuff that uh, you might not want it to do. So, but one of them in here in uh, in audio scroll down to uh, the audio is oh where is it metronome volume right there okay we have it set to 15 but it defaults at like two four something like that um so but i've upped it to 15 so that way you can hear it a lot clearer um uh, and uh because some of those tracks are pretty loud and it's hard to hear the metronome over it so you can change your volume with the metronome right there so let's go ahead and close that out and we'll go back to our bpm editor now here's how we can uh, set our beat. Now in this case, um, uh, for this track, it's 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 pretty close. If we zoom in, you can see it's off just a little bit. But uh, how can we can repair that? If we zoom in, we can take this and manually drag it. Okay, manually drag it right there, and uh, that's one way you can do it. You can, can use the the nudge, uh, whichever way is easier for you. Um, one thing uh, I'll tell you is like this is an old track and it's performed live. And um, these these tracks have a tendency to float, and um, so the variable BPM uh, is over here. This is it's great for tracks that float that you can see over here. And here it's you know nice and uh, rigid, but then it's already starting to float. Okay, with a var variable BPM editor, what you can do is you can uh, reset this at the end of every bar, or every time it starts to float away, and so that way your CBG up here stays. Um, and the reason that you can do that is because like, let's say you're having, you put uh, you have a drum loop or a bass loop or whatever on your other deck and you're trying to get it to ride along with, um, the, uh, the track that you have playing right here. If this tempo keeps floating up and down, you know, because it's just, you know, uh, people playing instruments, it's very easy to, to go up a little bit. You know, you'll, you'll find a track going, say it's 120 then it floats up to 121 and it floats down to 119. Then floats back to 120. Then it floats up to 122, and it can be a pain in the butt because you have to keep, you know, uh, when if you have like a turntable or, or anything, you you know, you got your pitch fader, you keep riding your pitch fader up and down, and trying to keep it to keep it in there. But if you hit, you set up your CBG, you know, you can see where your four count is. So, uh, and you can painstakingly go through and edit. You can even see how this, like up here, it's perfect. But here it keeps jumping. If you go to variable BPM, what you can do is you can keep setting beat anchors um, right at the end of each four count. So let's go ahead and we're going to go over here and we're going to set a new beat anchor. We're going to zoom in. And actually we see that our beat is actually over here a little bit. So let's take this and we're going to move this right here. You see when I click the variable BPM, it, it switched these two new buttons. This one sets a new anchor there. Now... Um, what it did is it basically cleared out the end of, of this one and when the 
uh, when the CBG gets here, it's automatically going to jump to the first beat. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and fix this a little bit, line to make it line up. Okay. All the way till we get to uh, number four, which is our, our gray line again. You can see it's, it's floated again. So we just come in here. We set our CBG, put in a new anchor. There, it's cleared out. It's cleared out. So now the CBG is going to stay in line. We just uh, go ahead and keep doing that. Now, in a lot of tracks, you don't need to do that. You know, most modern tracks, you know, even stuff that's performed live by live musicians nowadays, they they use a click track or they use a metronome or even if they didn't, you know, if they're using Pro Tools, they can uh, just just go in and fix it. Uh, so, uh, what we are doing here is uh, we're fixing tracks that you know don't have that advantage especially if you have you're dealing with a lot of old tracks uh, tracks from say uh, pre say like from the early 90s backwards you know uh, they're really bad even like a lot of hip-hop tracks you say well it's a loop it should stay you know but a lot of times it's either a DJ manually doing those loops or sometimes it's a, a guy drumming out that loop um, with an old sampler so uh, they can they can still float a whole lot, um, but let's do something a little more dramatic uh, because this is this is pretty good. We can go through here and we can re-anchor all these, but let's go all the way to, the, to here because while this stays pretty mellow here and it hasn't changed that much. I mean, it's floated a little bit, but let's okay. Let's zoom in here. We're gonna set a new beat anchor right here. Oh, and also this button right here, uh, what this is, because a lot of people say, well, it doesn't do anything, it does. This is, uh, it's just an anchor delete. So like, let's say we didn't want that anchor there, we can delete it, and now that anchor's gone. So just put it on your anchor and hit that button, your anchor's gone. Um, all right, so let's go in here, let's set our anchor where we want it. Oh, that's just our cursor. It's the red line's our anchor right there. Okay, now everything behind this anchor, uh, we can set a new BPM. Now in here, it's it's pretty much gonna stay in the 70s because you know it's I mean yeah it's floating a little bit but it's it's still about 77 beats per minute. Now this is gonna make a huge tempo shift, so we can fix that. Now if you notice, remember when I said that it's a hard to see um, visually where the uh, the beats are. Um, in this case, this is a perfect example. It's you can kind of see there's some stuff here, but it's hard to say 100% that that's going to be the beat. So we're going to use our metronome here, and let's go ahead because if we listen to this, let's listen to it. That that song has made a huge tempo increase. So let's go ahead and we're going to make a best guess about right here, but we're going to use our metronome to make sure that we got it right. Okay, now we got it pretty good. And you can see the tempo shifted to 125 beat per, beats per minute. So, and you'll notice that uh, there's a lot fewer of these because it's a higher tempo than there are these. These are more spread out uh, than what this is. And so we now, when we get to this point, our CBG, even though this is, I mean, you can, and here he is, nice fat block, nice fat block, this block gets cut off. And uh, so, Anyway, um, that's how you use the uh, the BPM editor. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to put them in the, con uh, the comments, and I'll try and get them answered for you. If uh, you really like it, you know, uh, click like down below or share on Twitter or Facebook. I always appreciate that. And um, communicate with me, and uh, I'll try and communicate with you back. If you have any more uh, video suggestions, please let me know, and I'll try and get some more done for you. Uh, until then, uh, I'll talk to you guys later.